And a happy Valentine's Day to you. It is the 14th day of February 2018. It's a Wednesday. I am Dan Coombs. This is Wake Up Anche Valley. And I like to say each day it's a very special edition of Wake Up Anche Valley. Today, I really mean it. It's a very special edition of Wake Up Anche Valley because we have the 2018 Apple Blossom Festival Royal Court. Steve in the room, ready to be on TV. I can't think of a better way to celebrate Valentine's Day than a visit from our young ladies with the Apple Blossom Festival. It's just a quirk in the calendar because they're going to do the media tour pretty much all day today. They're mm -hmm. going to start out with us because, well, we're pretty cool. And uh, then they're just going to head off to the other radio stations and things like that and talk about Saturday night. And it's down the road they go. Uh, kudos to the judges. We mentioned this on Monday uh, on this show. I don't know how they do it no. because all 10 candidates were highly qualified to make the top three. That's right. So. Judges were all from out of town, too, right? Yeah, so none no, of them are from the Wenatchee Valley. No favoritism here. Yep, like, that's it. To. They have a small little get-together on Friday night, kind of just a very informal kind of a dinner thing with the five judges and, and, the, um, and the top ten candidates. And then on Saturday morning, they go. The, the process begins in earnest with the one-on-one -on -one interviews. We'll talk about all about that. Queen Greta will be here alongside with Princess Sophie and Princess Jessica that are coming up in the uh, second half of the show. Would you accommodate me right sure. now? Just just an opportunity here. Yeah, go ahead. I know my wife, Lynette, is watching right now. So, Nettie just wanted to wish you a very special Valentine's Day. The girl who floats my boat, you might say. Yeah. But uh, it means so much to me, Lynette, and I just wanted to wish you a very special Valentine's Day today, and I'm bringing sushi home with me today. Oh, what a sweet. <laughs> you honey dripper, you. Hey. And who's kidding who? He married way up. <laughs> he married way, I'm way up. I'm a lucky up. guy. Yeah, I'm you are. You're a very guy. lucky guy. Great show for you today. Unbelievable basketball game last night at the Wenatchee High School Gymnasium. A double overtime thriller in a district play-in game between the Wenatchee Panthers and the East My Wildcats. If you missed it, we got highlights of that. Uh, just an insane game, double overtime. Yeah, that's it, always exciting yeah. when you get an overtime, but double overtime, and mm -hmm. especially with the two teams, yeah. you know. Bragging it, rights now was, for the Panthers, huh? Yeah, well, they took three of the four games that they played this year. And I've watched a lot of basketball in my time. I can never remember a game that went into double overtime and Eastmont never led once. Isn't that odd? Isn't that, that is a quirk? Yeah. You would think a double overtime game would go back and forth and, and down to the, you know, all this other stuff. Eastmont, tied the game a bunch of times, but they never once in the entire course of the game led wow. the game. Wow. That's a, just a strange phenomenon. High happened. school basketball. Yeah, it's exciting. So the Panthers move on for both Eastmont teams. The boys and the girls, their season came to an end. We got sports. We got the obscure holiday. Gee, I wonder what the obscure holiday of the day today is. We'll yeah. figure that out together. I wonder what's on Mike Magnotti's mind, too. Yeah. I know it's on Mike Magnotti's mind. You know what it is? Huh. It's Ash Wednesday. Oh, the topic today, definitely. heaven and hell. Oh, oh, heaven and really? hell is the yes will be Mike's topic today. On, uh, on everyone is entitled Mike to Mike. Mike doesn't shy away from politics or religion, does he? No, no, yeah. Mike doesn't care. Uh, real quickly, school delays. We got some for you. Not, nobody here in, in North Central Washington in the Valley proper, but Moses Lake School District, you're on a two-hour delay today. No morning preschool, no breakfast served. That's the most important meal of the day. Uh, the Othello School District, you're on a two-hour late. Uh, no AM preschool, no CB Tech. What's CB Tech? No, no. I don't know what that is either. Apparently they do that down in Othello. Yeah. Oh, that's how they teach him how to talk on a CB. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Breaker, breaker, one nine, this year's the rubber duck. He got we a got copy of me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Friend of School District is two hours late. Classes starting at 10 a.m. There will be morning preschool or breakfast. It, it says there will be or there won't be. Will Steve. not be. Will not be. Okay. Will not be morning preschool. This is in Afreda. Grant County Sheriff's Office says they got a lot of snow. Yeah, three to four inches on the ground in that uh, area between Moses Lake and Quincy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The storm system that we're talking about is actually coming down from the north. Normally it comes just dead west, mm -hmm. dumps a bunch of snow in the Cascades. We get a little bit here and there, then it picks up momentum. And usually Spokane or the Idaho Panhandle would get the next round of snow, the next band of snow, mm -hmm. while we usually miss out on it. But this is coming down from the north, which is why Moses Lake and Afreda and Othello are getting snow, and we are not but we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, forecast details are coming. It's a strange forecast. It's a little bit of everything today. Uh, but let's go around the north central Washington with our Valley View cameras, and we start out always with... The cross cam. I'm, I'm sorry? Up on the Wenatchee Heights? Yes. Uh, cross cam? Good. It's looking good. It's looking good. Wenatchee's looking... Was, uh, we're being laughed at in our IFB, Steve. I don't like it when that happens. <laughs> good morning, Wenatchee Valley. Thank you for starting your day with us here. 
the way. Boy, the time lapse photography that uh, Kat did yesterday from Billy Goat, yeah, and put it on our Facebook page. If you get a chance, check go to our Facebook out. page yeah. and check it out. She took a time lapse photography from her SkyFi uh, camera where the Met How meets the Columbia, and it's just spectacular. Speaking of spectacular, camera two. Oh, is a Rondo ooh, Rock. That's one of my favorites. Too. <clears throat> it's a great one. Yeah. And I still don't have an answer yet on why we call that camera a Rondo Rock unless that rock that you see in the Columbia is a Rondo Rock. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. I don't know. There are I was born and raised here and I've lived almost my entire adult life here and there's still some things I don't know. I still haven't seen Lincoln Rock, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Wow. I can't make it out myself. You know? <laughs> I'm not very good at making out those profile rock things. Okay. We learn something new about Steve every day, don't we? <laughs> Camera three, Lower Butte looking at Chelan. Ooh. Good morning, Chelan. Oh, by the way, uh, Mayor Cooney, we'll get your glasses back to you. Oh, those were his <laughs> glasses, huh? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike Cooney was actually in the Wenatchee Valley for a series of meetings and, and stuff, and so he dropped by and he did a quick interview for the NCAA Live channel. And then on Monday, when we went into our staff meeting, there was a pair of glasses sitting mm -hmm. on the chair. They were, they were Mike's. He left them behind. So the, uh, the mayor of Chelan had very poor vision over the weekend. <laughs> but I mean that from an optical standpoint, not an overall vision of the Chelan community. Camera four. Oh. Waterville camera. Speaking of Waterville, uh, you went up and visited our good friends up there in H2Oville. I did. I did. I had a wonderful time yesterday with my camera person, uh, Megan McPherson. Visited with the Douglas County Commissioners. Mm -hmm. uh, minus one, Steve Jenkins was ill, I'm sorry so he has that. the flu. Also learned that he's going to be retiring. Oh, wow. Yeah, Steve Jenkins is going to be stepping down as a commissioner and also ran into a possible candidate ah. for that position as well. So okay. we'll have that coming up soon. All right. But yeah, it was a great little visit up in Waterville. Uh, had a chance to visit with the prosecutor, Steve Clem. Uh, also met with the clerk and even dropped by City Hall there. but. Uh, Mayor Devaney wasn't in. He was too well, busy. He's been the mayor of Waterville since, I think, 1937. Something so he's, like he's allowed to take the day <laughs> off right. every once in a while. Seven minutes after the hour, let's do your forecast from the National Weather Service. Stay with me. This gets really confusing. Uh, this is just for the Wenatchee Valley, okay? Just for the Wenatchee Valley. We have a chance of snow before 11, then a chance of rain and snow between 11 and noon, then a slight chance of rain and snow in the afternoon. We start out with clouds, and then we go to sunshine. So did you get all that? A mixed bag. We could see some rain, could see some snow, could see some rain, snow mix. We're going to have some clouds. We're going to have some sun. Uh, the only thing here is no real wind. I guess that's about the only thing that we're not going to get today. And the forecast high today of 43, just slightly above normal. Clear tonight, 31 for the overnight low. Sunshine, very calm day. Calm before the storm uh, on Thursday, Steve, with a high of 43 because we got a system rolling in on Friday. Going to start out with partly sunny skies. It's going to get windy, Steve, on Friday, especially Friday afternoon. Get ready for this. It's going to start out with breezy conditions and go straight off to wind. We'll have in the afternoon, wind will be uh, west 19 to 24 miles an hour with gusts as high as 40 oh, miles an hour. Another one on of those Friday. Chinooks. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, absolutely. It is going to be a Chinook because with a high of Friday of 50 degrees. Yeah. Uh, continue breezy conditions Friday night, a slight chance of light snow, overnight low. Of about 33. Does that even say breezy there? It does actually say breezy. It does. And then Saturday and Sunday, here is your weekend. Uh, about a 40% chance of some kind of precipitation on Saturday. And then Sunday should be dry and a high of 43. Then a very cool weather pattern for next week uh, with temperatures below normal, oh. both for the afternoon high and the overnight lows will be ready Winter's for not done with us yet. No, winter is not done with us yet. To the mountain passes we go, and boy, we got some situations up there. To I 90 where chains are now required in all vehicles. Unless you have an all-wheel drive on Snoqualmie Pass, according to uh, the Department of Transportation, it is snowing very hard on I-90. Boy. Coming down. They have a winter weather advisory, by the way, until 10 o'clock this morning for the Cascades. Stevens Pass, traction tires advised. Compact snow and ice on the roadway there. It is snowing on Stevens, but not as hard as it is on Snoqualmie. And on Blewett Pass, as you see there, traction tires are advised. I'm seeing quite a bit of, of pavement on Blewett but they still got some snow and ice in places. It is snowing on Blewett. Traction tires are advised. So to recap, traction tire advisories are up and running on Stevens and on Blewett and on Snoqualmie Pass. It is a chain requirement unless you have an all-wheel drive and it's snowing to meet the band 
on I-90. Your forecast for the past is today, two to four inches of snow with the winter weather advisory uh, supposed to run its course by 10 a.m. this morning. Whatever snow that they're going to get today and it's coming down should taper off by about the noon hour. And then very quiet. Nothing really uh, precipitation-wise in the Cascades until we get to Friday. We talked about how we're going to have that Chinook coming through mm -hmm. on Friday with windy conditions. They're going to get snow in the Cascades, two to four inches on Friday and an additional three to five inches on Friday night. Well, I was looking at some of the pictures of Mission Ridge in the last few days and it had some nice groomed runs up there, but certainly an additional couple, three inches more would certainly help things. You, you bring up Mission Ridge, very interesting point at 10 minutes after the hour. Um, they're traditionally their busiest weekend of the year is this weekend. Oh, really? Yeah, with uh, the President's Day holiday. That's true. That's, yeah. In fact, I think the, uh, they keep records of this. I think the three or four bu single busiest days they've ever had at Mission Ridge were all the President's Day Monday. Ah, interesting. So, yeah. A lot of people have Friday off. Yeah, and mm -hmm. Monday. Monday is the Monday actual is holiday, the actual. right, President's Day, which, by the way, is still called Washington's birthday as far as the federal government is concerned. Well, Ten minutes right. after the hour, we got lots of news to get to, and this gentleman to my left is in charge of doing that. Buckle your seatbelts, we're gonna fill your head full of information. Good news for schools. One minute away, you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Productions is proud to bring to the NCW Life Channel the Concerts in the Gardens Summer Series held at Omi Gardens. The series features performances from Rare Earth's Peter Rivera, Heart by Heart, Two Slim and the Tail Draggers, The Infinity Project, The Wenatchee Swingin' Big Band, and a whole host of other great acts. Tune in Wednesdays at 1.30 and 7 p.m. and Fridays and Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. and 9 p.m. RLS Productions Concerts in the Gardens Summer Series, only on the NCW Life Channel. Bay Equity Home Loans in Wenatchee serving all of North Central Washington. We make it our priority to learn all about your financial needs. Whether you're buying your first home, refinancing, or want a reverse mortgage, our mortgage professionals are ready to guide you through the loan process. We have a wide variety of loan products to fit your family's needs. Call Bay Equity Home Loans of Wenatchee today for your free approval. 509-888-0466. And now it's time for your local news update with Steve Hare. Good morning and welcome back to Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We have some good news to share with our voters of several school districts here in Chelan, Douglas, Grant counties today. Election night totals, uh, we'll share with you right now. The uh, Just a few ballots uh, left to tabulate. It appears cashmere voters have overwhelmingly approved a school construction bond and maintenance and operations levy. Returns from yesterday's special election have the bond passing with over 70% approval. They only require a 60% uh, to pass. District replacement M&O levy is passing with 73% vote. Also, ENEAD voters said yes to renewing their school levy with over 62% voting in favor. Also in Douglas County election night returns, School levies were passing in the Waterville, the Palisades, and the Cooley Heartline districts. Meanwhile, Arondo's levy was also passing with 55% of the vote, only requires 50 plus 1% to pass. A one year excess levy in Douglas County Hospital District 1 was also approved, garnering 81% of the vote there. Results are unofficial until the election is certified. Log on to ncwlife.com for all of the election night totals, not just for Shalana Douglas. No, we've got the totals also for Grant and Okanagan County as well. So go online and check those out this morning. Local attorney Travis Brandt will now have competition in August for a seat on the Shalan County Superior Court bench. That competitor is already behind the bench. It's current Superior Court Judge Robert McSevity who filed with the State Public Disclosure Commission last Wednesday to retain that seat on the bench. Uh, McSeveny was appointed to the bench by Governor Jay Inslee earlier this year to replace retiring Judge Chip Small. McSeveny was sworn in on February 1st. The filing pits McSeveny against local attorney Travis Brandt in the August primary. Brandt, who previously ran for the Superior Court seat back in 2012, declared his candidacy at the end of January and had been favored to replace outgoing Judge Small by the Chelan-Douglas County Bar Association, who ranked him as highly qualified. 
Well, the Douglas County Commissioners are adamantly opposed to a proposed carbon tax in Washington State. The commissioners are also highly critical of State Senator Brad Hawkins, who abstained when the bill came up for a vote in his Senate committee earlier this week. Commissioners rifled off a scathing letter to Hawkins this week explaining their disappointment. You know, it is the impression of the board and mine personally that the carbon tax is disproportionately punitive to rural counties. Uh, in other words, we have farther to travel. We're an ag-based industry, which relies on trucking and shipping. Uh, you've got people who have to drive long distances, and there's no benefit from it coming back from Olympia to the rural communities and counties. So it, it's a, a punishment without any positive effect, and it, it's just not good for Eastern Washington. It's not good politics. And your thoughts on, 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 on Senator uh, Hawkins' uh, position on this? Well, I, I think it's much, much more simple than that. You can get down in the minutia and way down to the weeds uh, of this bill, but we're elected to represent the constituents of Douglas County. Uh, we're being told, you know, uh, almost unanimously, with the, 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 our constituents of Douglas County oppose this measure. We're listening to them. We're, we're, we're formulating a response to the calls that we're receiving and the people that are talking to us. I can't say for the same if Senator Hawkins is doing the same thing. Now, during that tour last week, the governor met with Chelan County PUD commissioners where the issue of the carbon tax came up. Uh, the governor also reported afterwards that his carbon tax proposal is supported by the state's apple industry as a means of battling climate change and its reported impacts on fruit. Well, a bill making its way out of the State House Friday requires the newly created State Department of Children, Youth, and Families to develop a website in conjunction with the Department of Commerce that provides business resource and guidance for employer-supported child care. Now, the measure also establishes a child care scholarship and loan repayment program. Democrat Representative Christine Reeves sponsored that bill. Right now, 40% of Washington's kids aren't getting access to the high quality care and the curriculum they need to prepare them for kindergarten. Today, we're doing something unique. We're building a public-private partnership to bring employers to the table, to invest in small businesses to make that critical investment in their employees and their families. The CARE Act is gonna move us toward closing the gap between employers and employees. It's gonna make sure that we're doing something to help middle-class families who are struggling today. Meanwhile, GOP House Representative Joe Schmick of Colfax spoke in opposition to that bill. Why don't we have more daycares out there? Well, first of all, we regulated them out of existence. Many of the daycares in my district are gone. Then we allowed unionization of the workers. And now we're, we also passed a bill last year that we have to have a master's degree to run a daycare and now it's too expensive. Policy that we make in this chamber makes things more expensive. And so I want to take a step back and look at those things. Yeah, it's an innovative idea, absolutely. But we put these places out of business. We made them too expensive so people can't afford it. Now that measure passed out of the House on mostly a partisan vote. It's now headed to the Senate for consideration. A popular Leavenworth area snowmobile route is closed due to hazardous uh, trees. It was back in late January. A windstorm blew down over a dozen trees across Route 2B to Trinity, which is now blocked by those trees between Wilson and Phelps Creeks and is unsafe to use. It's a pretty popular trail. Crews will not be able to safely remove those trees until the snow melts, according to officials with the Okanagan and Wenatchee National Forest. Snowmobilers take note, Route 2B is closed at the Little Giant Trailhead. It's going to remain closed for the rest of the season. Uh, for more information, you can contact the Wenatchee River Ranger District with the forest at 548-2550. That's a wrap on our news for now. And of course, for more, we'll have coming up uh, with Grant Olson at 5 o'clock on NCW Live evening news and certainly uh, we invite you to join us uh, for 
all of our programming throughout the day. We got luck yeah. coming up today. In fact, we got the royalty coming in today. In so. fact, when you were doing that, and by the way, at the bottom of your screen, you can look at all the ways you can get a hold of us. Right. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, while you're looking at that, uh, while you were doing the news, I Googled proper etiquette when conversing with royalty because I want to do this right mm -hmm. with the with the Apple Boss Royal Court here. Uh, in the second half of the show. Uh, boy, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I'm not to address the queen directly unless she addresses you. I am always to refer to her as Her Majesty. Right. I'm not doing that. Not Your Highness? No, because well, I looked at the bottom and it turns out this is all like English etiquette. And then I remembered we had a revolution like 240 years ago and told them to go take a hike. So no, that's true. So but, I, know, think, I think uh, Greta and Sophie and Jessica will let me address them by their first names. I hope so. Nave. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, she's the queen. She can she can make your life miserable. She can send you off to the tower or off to the, you know, off with his head. Yeah, we're just mere serfs in all of this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to visit with these three lovely young ladies. That's coming up in the back half of the hour. Yeah, you, remember they're chaperones, so yes, they're watching you. Yes, they are. Dan, yeah, so you're on those best five. Behavior. Those five are going to get to know each other so well. The three royal courts and the two. Um, chaperones who are with them whenever they make a public appearance. Mm -hmm. They are always chaperoned by these two great ladies, uh, Miss Wade and Miss Fryover. Um, they're going to be a, they're going to be a family by this time next year when they hand it over to the 100th Apple Blossom Festival. Well, they came walking in this morning wearing their tiaras, yeah. tiaras, whatever the hell yeah. you pronounce it, but uh, all looking all sparkly and pretty this morning. Yep, uh, looking better than us. I can tell you that much. Hey, speak minutes, yourself. <laughs> 21 minutes after the hour, cloudy and 30 degrees, clouds, a little rain, a little snow this morning, and then it gradually gives way to sunshine this afternoon. If you missed the Wenatchee Eastmont boys basketball game last night, we have a highlight package you don't want to miss, double overtime. Congratulations to Sean White, taking the gold yes. in the half pipe last night. Yes. Fantastic I'd, job. I love the Olympics. I love the Olympics. That is amazing. Isn't it? Watching those guys yeah. do that, ply their trade the way they do. Amazing stuff. 21 minutes after the hour, sports is one minute away. You're watching Wake Up in Etchie Valley live this morning from Studio 9 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom with NCW Life Sports. I'm NCW Life News Director Steve Hare. Catch us on Local Tell Channel 12. You can watch us on Charter Channel 19 or stream us live on ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Where we cover the local high schools, the Wenatchee Wild, and the pro teams out of Seattle. On Saturday, we have a 90% chance of rain. Catch it all right here on the NCW Life Channel. My name is Robert Duff, current and previous occupation is architect, engineer, and lawyer. Grew up here in Washington, born in Moses Lake. When I first came to CVCH, I uh, was looking for a place to get some dental work done. And I was really impressed with the people at the counter. I mean, they were just on top of it. It only took her like 15 minutes to do the job. I didn't feel anything. The technology is so great, you don't even realize you're at the dentist. These people are so professional. I would have any one of these people at my home for dinner. These people are family. And welcome back to this Wednesday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. It is Valentine's Day. It is Ash Wednesday. It's 23 minutes after the hour. I'm Dan Koontz. Let's do sports. We started sports today with a trip around the courts last night. It was playing basketball in the Big Nine. Eastmont hosted West Valley. The Wildcats' Bryn O'Rourke got off to a good start. She led for a stretch in the first quarter. But West Valley was able to make some key outside shots throughout the course of the game. Our very own Grant Olson and Eric Grandstrom was there. We had the game live on the NCAA Life Channel. And here are your highlights. Mason. Mason looked at the long shot. Won't take it. Now the drive. Now the cutoff. And there's Brenner Rourke stealing the ball. She'll go coast to coast. Lay it up and good. To the rack. Saves the ball inbound. Here's Cox. Feeds outside to Rourke for a three-pointer. Good. Fetzer outside. Passes across to Wilson for a three-pointer. Good. First field goal of the second half for West Valley. And it's a three by Ariel Wilson. Left side. Here's a long three-pointer. Dagger in the heart of Eastmont by Lexi Mason been kind of a balanced load for West Valley all the way through. Here's a three-pointer from the corner by Wilson. Good. Goodness gracious. Seven points for Wilson in the quarter. 16 of the ball game and a timeout taken here by Eastmont with half of a quarter to go and somebody sees it. 
Here Left side down to the corner to Peasley. Now to Cox for the drive. Step past nice the defense. Nice layup again. Layup for Caitlin Cox. Somebody's got to step up here. Maybe Caitlin can do it. Vaughn's going to run it up the far sideline. Pass it in the corner for a Cox three-pointer. Good! Ahead to Maddie Chandler. Chandler just throws one up, and that will be it. And East Watt's season will come to a close here as they fall to the West Valley Rams by a final of 56 to 50. Caitlin Cox and Britt Vaughn each had 11 points for Eastmont. Ariel Wilson led all scorers. She led West Valley with 22 points. So Eastmont's season, the girls anyway, came to an end at 56 to 50. That was the exact same score for the Wenatchee Panthers game down in Yakima against Davis. The Panthers season also coming to an end in girls basketball. The Pirates erased a five-point halftime deficit to pull out the victory. Wenatchee was led by Allie Hallberg with 15 points in defeat. So the boys play in game. Wow, what a classic last night. The fourth meeting between the Panthers and the Wildcats. This one at the Wenatchee High School Gymnasium. The Wildcats perimeter shooting have been off all night, except when it really counted at the end. It was an electric atmosphere at the Wenatchee High School Gymnasium. Our friends Ian Dunn and Mark Miller have the call on Coho Radio right here. And if we foul, odds are he's have a to the right. Here's Lisa on a three-pointer. Yes! He won a time to hit his time first up. one. What a time His to first hit. three pointer of the game. Long across the timeline. Comes to his left. Now off the Carlson screen. He'll penetrate to the hoop. Off glass. Missed it. And the rebound to Eastmont. Racing into the front court to Sparza. To the hoop. Blocked! And it's JJ blocked. Jelsing with an incredible block. They say it was after the shot, it's so it won't go in the books. But oh my goodness. goodness. We're all tied at 44, heading to overtime. Carlson standing at about midcourt to Kuski. Into the front court he comes. He'll hand off to Lisan, the three pointer. Oh my goodness, he made it! I don't believe it! Are you kidding me? Lightning has struck twice. I don't believe it. He, he made the shot at the buzzer. To Blauman, 10 on the shot clock. Now long. To Carlson. Carlson, the dribble drive to the hoop. And in. Swap to the left hand. It's indescribable. 11 points tonight. And here's Lee Son. He'll try the long three off the back iron. The rebound inside to Eastmont. And then he gets it stripped away. And that will do it. When next he's going to win it in double overtime. 57 to 49 as the Eastmont students run onto the court to congratulate their winning team tonight. Boy, oh boy, what a game this has been. Mark Miller. It took two overtimes to do it. The Panthers are celebrating. An incredible double overtime victory for the Wenatchee Panthers. By the way, we'll see if we can get that game in its entirety on our website by the end of the week. All right, you want to watch it if you missed it. Wenatchee wins 57-49. to They move on to the district tournament. They'll take on Sunnyside on Thursday. There was another playing game last night, by the way, on the boys' slate. Moses Lake Edge, West Valley, 66-62. to The Chiefs will play at Davis on Friday night. Last night, also the first round of the Central Washington 1B tournament, Antioch fell to Pateras, 57-24. Riverside Christian also advanced a 69-43 win over Moses Lake Christian. So the Tigers will play Moses Lake Christian tomorrow at 3 at the Eastmont Junior High School to stay alive. Pateras and Riverside Christian plays tomorrow at 6, also at the Junior High for the district championship. And on the prep schedule for today, in girls play, the District 6-1A tournament wraps up at Eastmont High School. Okanagan will take on OMAC tonight at 5. That will determine the number 2 and number 3 seeds heading into the crossover games, which are next weekend. And in the first round of the Central Washington 1B tournament, Andy will host Wilson Creek at 5. Pateras plays at Riverside Christian at 6. And there's one boys playoff game tonight. Cashmere, it's a must-win situation against Okanagan. The final round of the dist District 6-1A tournament, Eastmont High School tip-off at 7 o'clock. 28 minutes after the hour. I need a breather. <laughs> Let's do uh, the obscure holiday of the day today. There's nothing obscure about Valentine's Day, of course. It is Valentine's Day. It goes back a long, long time ago. Um, St. Valentine was beheaded because he said, I'm a Christian and I believe in that. And Claudius II said, 86. So how do we go from beheading people to Valentine's Day? Uh, it's too complicated to explain. But some fun facts about uh, Valentine's Day. St. Valentine is the patron saint of couples, no surprise there, lovers, beekeepers, 
Greetings, love, travelers, young people. St. Valentine is also the patron saint against the plague, fainting, and epilepsy. Valentine's Day. By the way, the first Valentine's Day, Day card was mass produced in 1847. Happy Valentine's Day to you folks out there. 29 minutes after the hour, 30 degrees outside of our studios. Can't rule out some rain or some snow this morning, sunshine this afternoon. And if you're just joining us, quite a bit of snow out in the Columbia Basin in the Moses Lake, Quincy, Euphrates area. They're getting lots of snow, but not so much here in the Valley floor. Uh, today in history, we welcome to the Union two states who joined the United States on Valentine's Day. Uh, for the state of Oregon, it was 159 years ago that the Beaver State uh, became the 33rd state of the Union. Oregon has one national park, but it is probably my favorite national park I've ever visited, and that's Crater Lake. If you've never been to Crater Lake National Park, put it on your bucket list. The beauty is indescribable. The Oregon State song is Oregon, my Oregon. And uh, the Oregon State flag is the only state flag that has two sides on it. You see the front side of the Oregon State flag. The flip side of the Oregon State flag is a beaver. Not surprisingly, Oregon joined the Union 159 years ago. And the last state to make the contiguous U.S. Uh, US altogether, Arizona, admitted as the 48th and last of the contiguous U.S. states on this state in 1912. That's right, Arizona is only 106 years old. Ar uh, Arizona, of course, is known as the Grand Canyon State. Arizona's motto, Diet Dus, Diet Dus, which is Latin for hot enough for you, happy birthday. Arizona. Welcome to the Union. All right, 31 minutes after the hour, we got birthdays to get to, and then we'll uh, take a quick commercial break and get the royalty in here. Three birthdays, all three of these gentlemen were all born on the exact same day, February 14th, 1913. We begin with Mel Allen. How about that? Mel Allen, the voice of the Yankees. I'm a Yankee. You know that. The voice of the New York Yankees from 1939 to 1964, and then again from 1976 to 1985 the first broadcaster to be inducted into the broadcaster's wing of the Baseball Hall of Fame, the great Mel Allen. We love Mel. Born in the state in 1913, born in the state in 1913, legendary Ohio State football coach, Woody Hayes. I did that one for Cat. Number one, I'd like to follow Ohio State. Number two, Cat's from Ohio. Woody Hayes was born in the state in 1913, passed away at the age of 74 in 1987. Everybody's familiar with his firing back in 1978 at that famous incident at the Gator Bowl, but his players were extremely loyal to him. He lived on campus for the rest of his life, the great Woody Hayes. Born in this state in 1913, and born in this state in 1913, Jimmy Hoffa, president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters from 1958 until 1971. He said he would never run again. He went to prison because he was in bed with the mob. In 1975, he said, I want the presidency back. Jimmy Hoffa disappeared in July of 1975, and if you've seen him, Please contact us here at the NCW Life Channel. 32 minutes after the hour. Going to take a break. Everyone is entitled to Mike McNally's opinion. It's Ash Wednesday. The topic today is heaven and hell. And then we got royalty. The 2018 Apple Blossom Festival Royal Court in studio right around the corner. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley live from Studio 2 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. With 15,000 square feet to explore, you'll find something special at the Antique Mall at Kashmir. For the do-it-yourselfers and those with a keen eye for making something old, fresh and new again, the Antique Mall at Kashmir is the place to come find your next project. From the coin enthusiasts to avid collectors, Antique Mall at Kashmir has treasures in every corner. Come find your treasure today. Antique Mall at Kashmir's friendly staff is here to help. Stop on by today. This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by Localtel. Head to Chelan for red wine and chocolate February 17 and 18. This weekend will be filled with romance, limousine rides, wine tasting, and chocolate. Happening at Pibus February 18 is the Wenatchee Valley Empty Bowls Community Painting Party. Paint a ceramic bowl from 1 to 4 with friends and family to help fight hunger in the community. For more information and other community events, visit ncwlife.com. Quality, comfort, style, service. This is the Crown Furniture Difference for more than 50 years. Their commitment to you is to provide the best furniture and mattresses the industry has to offer at a great price. Shop Crown Furniture today to experience the difference. And remember, free setup delivery in Holloway in their service area is just another way they show they care.
At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house, fresh, daily. Featuring Northwest Craft Beers and 30 Chelan Valley Wines and Ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. So, how you guys doing? My job starts in Portland in a month. Mm. Can we find a buyer that fast? I think we're good. Our CBX app tells us who the best potential buyers are. We can pinpoint where the hottest prospects are located, right on this map. Mm, two cities over. It even lets us set the most accurate price. Wow, it really does all that. It really does all that. <laughs> well, help us pack? <laughs> We're working on that. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. You know, you've been wrong about heaven and hell. You really have. I realized that what I've been taught about these places is really screwed up. First of all, hell isn't hot. I mean, you're supposed to be miserable there, right? So instead of being hot, hell must be colder than a well digger's butt with slush, ice, and terminally cold, wet feet. And heaven's supposed to be paradise, correct? A place where you're both really comfortable, happy, and you're thrilled to be there. So heaven has got to be a place that it's warm, with warm salt water, cold beer, and hot garlic shrimp. And also, there'll be roller coasters, oh yeah, wild, crazy, upside down and corkscrew roller coasters, and never aligned to wait in. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's heaven. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. <laughs> I'm Jenny Rojanasatian, and this is Guada TV. Every week we will be bringing you a first look at North Central Washington business, tech, and education news. You'll hear from local influencers and innovators who live right here in the Valley. Together we'll discuss hot topics, current events, and resources that can support your business, our schools, and this community. Join me every week and let's get inspired. Thursday night, hockey night on the NCW Life Channel. It all begins at 7 o'clock with a call of the wild and Clarkie's Corner. Then it's non-stop hockey action with a voice of the wild, Arch Ecker. Join us as the wild battle the rest of the BCHL. Thursday night is hockey night on the NCW Life Channel. Dear Mary Maids, just got home from a trade show and I didn't have time to pick up the house. Kids made chili. Jeff did a mud run. Oh, and Winston shredded Teddy's bed. Again, please clean it the best you can. Oh, except for the statue Max made for me. Thanks, Abby. Hi, Abby. Clean kitchen. Clean bath. Clean floor. Naughty cat. Poor Teddy. The statue is precious. You should keep it forever. See you next time, Mary Maids. Why live your life in the dark? At Schmidt Electric, we're one of the oldest and most respected companies in the Pacific Northwest. Founded by my father in 1960, we have grown from two employees to 130. From small commercial businesses to heavy industrial companies, we employ some of the most respected contractors. We're also a proud member of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers for over 50 years. Call us at Schmidt Electric today. Thirty-nine minutes after the hour of this Valentine's Day edition of Wake Up Anansi Valley, I am Dan Koontz. It's a tradition that dates all the way back to 2017, and that's when the reigning royal court, just a few days after <laughs> they get their crowns, get to come in and visit with me here on Wake Up Anansi Valley. To my immediate left, Queen Greta. Next to her, Queen Jessica, and on the far left, Queen Sophie. Welcome to the program, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to have you here. Um, I'd like to start. You know, this is the first time you've been on the program, so let me start with just a quick icebreaker. Uh, how was your weekend? Anything happen? Anything exciting? Watch some movies? What is it? Pretty average. <laughs> just nothing, nothing much going on. Did some homework. Did some homework, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we were there, we broadcast it live uh, in high definition and stereophonic sound here 
on the NCAA Live channel. And as we roll the footage of that magic moment when the royal court was um, crowned, we'll start with you, Princess Sophie. You're there. Princess Sophie Castilla. What went through your mind right then and there? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> and that sounds funny, but I instantly lost my voice. And um, everything that I had even sort of prepared because they tell you going into it that you need to have a few words to say if there's a chance that you would get something. And so I had a few things that I thought I would say and then I completely forgot it all and just started <laughs> screeching. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Same question for you, Princess Jessica. The moment happened, boom, you're in the, you're in the royal court. Well, I was already crying a lot because they just announced Sophie as princess, and I was so excited for her, so I didn't really, I don't think I processed that they said my name, and I was just like, what's going on? And then by the time they called Greta's name, I was hysterical. So I just really wasn't <laughs> thinking anything other than why can't I stop crying, and I shouldn't be crying because people think I'm sad, but I wasn't sad. And the video doesn't lie. Um, Your Royal Highness, so <laughs> Princess Sophie is standing off to the side, and Princess Jessica is standing off to the side, and you're standing there with the, with the last seven, and you're going, Oh my goodness, is it going to be me? And then it was you. Same question as the other two. What went through your mind? So I was kind of preparing myself to hear every other girl's name, just because I think that's how I like approach situations. So then when he was like, Grr, I was like, what? Nope, nope. <laughs> but um, definitely a lot of emotion hit that once. And then it was like you go numb and you just don't really know exactly what to feel because it is bittersweet and it's super exciting and something that you don't really allow yourself to think about until it's actually happening. But, and then next it was just, where do I go? I'm walking the wrong way, the crown's gonna fall. I don't know what I'm doing, so, yeah. Are you used to the tiaras yet? I'll ask you, is it? Kind of, I'm still figuring out how to keep it on my head. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to hide it in your hair. I was talking to uh, your predecessor, Queen Amy. Uh, she came into the show just a couple of weeks ago before her reign came to an end. I said, do you get to the point where you don't even notice you're wearing it? She goes, no, you always know when it's on <laughs> yeah. because you got those little things sticking against your scalp yeah. and it can be somewhat uncomfortable, right? Yeah. So, um, we'll, let's, let's bring the camera back down to Sophie, uh, the microphone down to Sophie. Um, we'll start with you first. Saturday night, pageant, princess, walk down the hallway, reception at the commons, how long did it take you to just unwind? What time did you go to bed Saturday night? What was, the, what was the process like after it was all over? So after it was all over, I went home and all of my family that had come to watch the pageant was there. And so it was a little bit of, I was exhausted, but you wanna talk to everybody and you wanna share the moment with everybody. So you stay up a little bit and then I couldn't fall asleep even though I was so tired. So I went down to watch TV and um, yeah, no, it's definitely, it doesn't set in, and it hadn't set in, and I don't think it has yet, but... Um, it takes a while. Yeah, no, you are, because you give your all from mm -hmm. 6 a.m. in the morning to 11 a.m. or p.m. at night. Um, it's all of your emotion poured into one thing, and then it just suddenly being over in one night, it was... I don't know how to describe it. You just feel like you need to sleep for 24 hours, but you can't <laughs> sleep for one. <laughs> yeah. Get used to that, by the way. Jessica, same, same question. I've known your family for a long time. My guess is it took you a long time to just unwind when this whole thing was over on Saturday night. Yes, I didn't go to bed until like 4 in the morning. Wow. And I was up at 5 that morning, and I think I was just on an adrenaline rush. Like, I couldn't settle my mind. Like, my legs were tired, my feet hurt, my eyes were heavy, but I just couldn't fall asleep because I was like, what just happened? Because I think before the day of, I was kind of saying to myself, like, this is just a rehearsal, like, relax, because I'm definitely the type of person to get super nervous and psych myself out. So I was just like, oh, it's just another rehearsal. But then I was like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you another question before I ask uh, Queen Greta the same question. There's a lot of royal blood in the Murray family. I want to say you're maybe the third or fourth member of your family yes, to serve on the royal fourth. court. Fourth. So. Um, any advice from grandma or, or anybody like that? <laughs> they were super supportive the whole time. My grandma and grandpa was crying and they were so happy for me and they just always encouraged me to do this and I'm so glad that I did. I so wanted to see Portia on Saturday night and I just didn't, I'm so busy, I just didn't get a chance to visit. So <laughs> tell them I said hi. Okay. Queen Greta, your royal highness, is that, are you getting used to that yet? I don't think yet? I like it, I don't know. You don't like it? <laughs> So I just kind of want to run away and hide, but <laughs> yeah. I think I'll get used to it, I hope. You don't have much of a choice. Yeah. Can I call you Greta? <laughs> yes, okay. yes, please do. <laughs> um, Saturday night, same deal. I mean, it was all over and you're just like, 
Can I go to sleep? Now what? What was, yeah. what was the rest of your night like after it was all so over? So me and my family went to my escort's house, Chris Bishop. So shout out to Sarah Bishop for all that good <laughs> food. But I remember I was so tired. I didn't know what to think or who to talk to. So I just sat on the couch and I got a plate of tiramisu and vegetables <laughs> from the vegetable tray. And I was staring at it and I was like, this is such a weird combination. I'm way too tired and I need to go to bed. So I asked my mom to take me home and then I fell asleep pretty fast, which is kind of different, but like Sophie was saying, it's such a long day mm -hmm. and such a long month in all of the best ways, but also the buildup of emotion and everything. Just physically, you're just so done with everything. You just <laughs> want to sleep. So yeah. I slept really hard that night. It's an intense process, and the week of rehearsals outside of Friday night when you actually get the night off is, uh, is, is it's a lot of work, isn't it? because yeah. you're doing a show. It's mm -hmm. a show that you're putting on. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, it's 7 o'clock, the curtains part, and here we go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, On Sunday morning, you had breakfast with the outgoing uh, royalty, uh, uh, Princess Chevilicek and Queen Amy. What advice did they give you over breakfast on Sunday morning? Did they tell you anything that you can remember? It was Sunday morning, and you slept <laughs> about an hour and a half. The whole, like, Saturday and Sunday were kind of a blur, <laughs> so it's hard for us to pick apart each certain time. They gave us blankets, which were super nice, Aww. and I wrapped up in my blanket for the rest of the day. I'm, I'm going to stay here forever, but um, I'm trying to think of specifics. <laughs> what did they say? <laughs> Carry your hairspray and your lipstick. Smile and, all the time. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Be organized, which will be hard, but we will work <laughs> on it. So uh, you, you ladies are going to be um, a sisterhood for life. Yeah. In fact, as we talked about this when, uh, when you were in the green room, the three of you and your two chaperones are going to have a shared experience over the next year that is that will last a lifetime. Yeah. So, what's the first few days like? You're all. What, what do you girls talk about when there's? And we'll start with you, Jessica. When you're just like waiting to go on TV, what are you? What are you doing? Uh, I think we're kind of ourselves. We all know each other. We all go to Anachi, so we just kind of are familiar and don't really. I don't know. I don't think we've processed that like we're royalty. If that makes sense, so we're just kind of like, hey, what's up? But I love, we all have brothers, so it's so mm -hmm. cool that we get the opportunity. Like, I don't even know how to curl my own hair, or like, when Greta <laughs> called me, she was like, you want coffee? Like, I need to come curl my hair, and I was like, okay. Like, I'm so not used to that, because my brothers don't curl my hair, or <laughs> share makeup with me, or buy me coffee. They're like, what's up? And I'm like, hi. Oh. So, that's all. <laughs> Princess Sophie, let me ask you this. Uh, you got scholarship money. You got a lot of scholarship money. Has that, from what happened Saturday night, changed your post-high school plans at all? Or you still, you still have your eye on the prize that you talked about when we did our interviews a couple weeks ago? I think all of the colleges that I've applied to are staying the same. And it still continues the effort to get other scholarships. But it definitely it makes a big dent on how much stress you have about college. Because going into the new experience, it's really nice to have that cushion of the three months of work that you've had and seeing it pay off like that, it's really cool. And I think a lot of girls forget that it's a huge scholarship opportunity. Um, apart from getting to wear the crown and being <laughs> in the parade, it's a big deal for your academics too. So it's super cool. Oh, one more question, then I'll let uh, Jessica take over. Um, what's the one Apple Blossom Festival event during the 10-day festival that you're looking forward to the most as, as a royal court? Well, so I've been in Wenatchee my whole life, so I've experienced pretty much all of the festival, but my favorite thing is the classy chassis because um, we have a Mustang, and it's a tradition with my dad to drive in the parade every year, and although I don't get to do that, I get to wave this year and wear my crown, so it's a really special thing, and he'll still be driving, so I'll get oh, to good. see him then. Jessica, same two questions. First of all, the scholarship money, has that changed your, your, your college plans at all, or is it the same, same as it was just li on Friday night? It's the same. I think my parents are a little more relieved because <laughs> I want to go to California for college, and out-of-state tuition is very expensive, mm -hmm. so it helps that I have that money to go towards that. And then, um, I forgot the other question. What did I ask you about the, oh, your, your favorite <laughs> Apple Blossom event, yeah. <laughs> I know it's a basic answer, but definitely the food fair. Okay. <laughs> I love the food, and I always look forward to it. Shishka berries and the funnel cakes are amazing. <laughs> we'll let Her Royal Highness um, <laughs> wrap up this little interview section. Next, uh, first question. I, I forgot the Apple Aaron scholarship. Six thousand for the Queen? Is that yeah. right? Correct. That's yeah. a big check. Yes. But it, it's that's going to help alleviate tuition and stuff like that. But yeah. your plans haven't changed. I I don't think they've changed, but it definitely does open up things that were 
a little more iffy, and I also am interested in some California schools, so that makes it a lot more feasible than just going without <laughs> anything. Yeah. But like Sophie said, I'm also still trying to get other ones too, but it's so generous and definitely super helpful and not something I allowed myself to think about mm -hmm. until now. <laughs> so I, I remember I got home that night and I we had gone to the bishops and then we had got home and I was just walking around in a daze around my house and I was like, who are these flowers from? But I walked up to my mom and I was like, wait, I just got a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that part. But it's, yeah, so that's really exciting. Favorite apple blossom event that you're looking forward to? I'm really excited for carnival. I love mm -hmm. carnival, but I think I don't love it no, so much for the rides, but more all the kids. <laughs> I love kids and they're all in one spot and they're running around and they're so cute. Um, so I'm really excited for that and then also I love cotton candy oh. <laughs> and I don't have many opportunities to get it and my mom used to limit my cotton candy intake so <laughs> I'm really excited for carnival. We kind of got off last to off topic and I told you off camera I want to ask you about this so real briefly the Saturday morning one-on-one -on -one interviews which nobody gets to to see we'll start with you uh, Queen Greta when the interview process was over and you left the room did you think I did really good do you, I think I might have a shot here what was your what was your mindset when that interview process was over on Saturday morning? I don't think I necessarily thought I did good or I did bad, but I walked away knowing I did myself and I knew that I was super real and I was super myself, which was really assuring because that's what they tell you. They say, be genuine mm -hmm. and be yourself. And I think that's hard because at the same time they're telling you, sit up straight, make sure you cross your legs right. But um, that's ultimately what it comes down to and that's what makes this group so fun is that we can be super real with each other and joke about things and sometimes trip or <laughs> Who knows what we're going to do. <laughs> but, yeah, so I walked away knowing that and also knowing that I made a connection with those judges just because of the people that they are and how kind they were. It was really special knowing that no matter what happened, I had had those special conversations and them and themselves were gifts to me. So, Real quickly, Jessica, same question. Saturday morning interview with the judges, just you and the judges and a couple of observers. Did you walk out of that little one-on-one -on -one thinking, I did pretty good. <laughs> I think kind of the opposite, like, because during, in the moment, I was just saying the first thing that came to my mind, because as Greta, I wanted to be myself and not say an answer that I thought they wanted to hear. So afterwards, I was like, why did I say that? Like, I should have said this, like, this would have sounded better, or like, and I just kind of, I overthought it afterwards, but I think in the moment during the interviews, you kind of just have a conversation, and it was not at all as intimidating as I thought it was, or scary. It was, they were so kind and just wanted to get to know you, so. Sophie, same question after the interview on Saturday morning. I think I didn't really have emotion as to if it was good or bad. I just felt like I gave it my all. And that was super important to me because I would be okay with whatever happened that night if I felt really good about what I did. And I didn't want to look back and regret what I said. And there was one thing that I said that kind of made them laugh and made me feel like, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> that was a little bit dumb. But um, it was funny thinking about it more and looking back. It was truly my genuine self. And like Greta said, you really want to stay true to who you are. And you're not trying to be anyone else but yourself. And they want to see that side of you. And so leaving the interview, I just felt like, you know what? Whatever happens, that was the best I could do. So I'll be happy with whatever. Queen Greta, I got something for you. I, I'm sure you started the scrapbooking process already, right? I mean, kind of. memories. <laughs> uh, They're collected. I don't know if you even know what this is. Do you know what this is? No. This is the piece of paper that we get to know in advance the royal court. Um, obviously, uh, Steve Neer from Cordell Neer is the person who adds them all up. And um, he adds them all up. It's, it's confirmed with the two people who supervised throughout the entire process. I want to say it was Brian Flonis and, and Lance Abel was with you the whole time. And then it's written on a piece of paper. And the people who are allowed to know in advance is a very small group, very discreet. Nicole Brown tracked me down. We drained this. All, all this was arranged in advance. You find me at this time. Mm -hmm. And this is the actual sheet that they gave me. And this is uh, so you could film us, right? Princess 10, Princess 5, Queen 7. That was your candidate number. And this wow. is for you. You can have that. Put that you. in your scrapbook. That's so, so cool. So very few people get to see that. That is so special. So that's for Thank you. you. Yep. Ladies, have a lot of fun. <laughs> we will see you a bunch come the last weekend in April and the first weekend in May because we'll be all over the Apple Blossom Festival, all right? I know you got places to go. Say hi to my friends uh, and all the other media. They all know me. <laughs> I mean, every, it's a small town. So. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll wrap up this Wednesday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley live here from Studio 4 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel.
every golfer aims to play their best, and smart golfers turn to the golfer's edge to get the golfer's edge. PGA professional Ed Payne has you covered from tee to green. You can work on your swing or play 18 in air condition to comfort on the golf simulator. Tanya's Corner has all the apparel the golfer needs at sale prices. And Ed can even rebuild your favorite set of clubs or custom make you a brand new set. Ask how you can qualify for a free 30-minute lesson at the Golfer's Edge on mission between Kittitas and Yakima. Join us for Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. This former police sergeant is plugged into not only the world of the streets, he's an actor and connoisseur of the arts. So join Mike and his guest for, well, Street Talk and Other Stuff. Mondays at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m., and Wednesdays at 5.30. It's Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike McNaughty on the NCW Life Channel. Hi, I'm Blair from Works, your workout prescription. Have you ever started an exercise program and struggled to keep it going? So what if I told you that with this MyZone device, I could increase your chances of self-motivated exercise adherence by over 200%. Combine that with an exercise prescription specifically for your level of readiness, we'll increase it even more. And that's our new member success system. It's $99. It's exclusively at Works. It includes your MyZone belt. Works. YourWorkoutRx.com. NCW Life Channel, your home for local news, local weather, local sports and local shows featuring local people covering local topics like Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Let's learn. Street Talk and Other Stuff. The 12th District. Life with Lisa. And Arbiter of Stoke. NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. And welcome back to Wake Up Anchee Valley on this Wednesday. Dan Kuntz alongside Steve here on this Valentine's Day. Uh, I feel kind of, kind of naked without all my toys on my desk here, Steve. Um, but uh, just for those of you who, are, and most of the time, when I, the stuff I put on the set uh, for the morning show has no rhyme or reason. It's just yeah. random stuff. Um, but today I kind of themed it out a little bit because we had royalty Apple Blossom Festival. So we had an, uh, an Apple record, the Apple Beatles record, label. The Beatles, yeah. Yep. And we had, I'm just going to put that over there gently. And we had just this, it's a prop apple, it's not a real one, but I had that on the it's set. It's one of those, one of those uh, Japanese fake things. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I had that on the set. <laughs> and then we had uh, a golf ball because uh, one of my favorite, if not my single favorite Apple Blossom event is the golf tournament every year. The tournament, yeah. Yep, which is the Thursday before the big weekend. So there's a golf playing ball. playing this, this year? Um, I can't leave Chelan to Douglas uh, County River. It's a probation okay. violation. So you're going to have to tell me how you get that bracelet off your ankle, by the way. <laughs> I don't know how you did it. And this is, I don't know what this is. Uh, this is the official thing because we had to wear this to get to wherever you wanted to go backstage and around mm -hmm. um, on Saturday night at the Wenatchee High School Auditorium. You had to wear this official badge, which I didn't, but I still had it anyway. And of course, Gumby Bacon. Oh, come be back on my because favorite. Of the food fair. The food fair. The yeah, food fair. Yeah. The food fair. My uh, annual, tr my annual ode to trans fat. <laughs> <laughs> it's you get ten days to just completely Gorgeous abuse yourself. your body with stuff that isn't really, and which isn't true. There's some food that's actually good for you yeah, that they have yeah. there, and there's some I go to every year because it's the only chance I really get to visit them, as well. Steve, we got about a minute and a half left. Stories we're working on for the five o'clock news. Well, coming up, uh, we have more on the election results from yesterday. Some good news for a number of school districts, including Kashmir, overwhelming support for their bond. Uh, that's going to pay for some new technology, some health and safety improvements out there at the high school. And uh, another uh, replacement levy also passed. So a number of school districts also running uh, measures yesterday. And uh, for the most part, everybody won. For the, for the record, levies are education and bonds are buildings. And bonds need that 60% majority yeah. to pass. So it looks like my understanding, talking to uh, uh, Superintendent Johnson at the Cashmere School District, they're going to do an extensive remodel of Cashmere High School. Now Absolutely. That that's, now that's, that's assured improved. now. That's, that's good news. They could mm -hmm. use it. The, the school is... 38 years old, I want right. to say, so right. it, could, it could use a little remodel. You also, had a, what? also had a chance to talk with the uh, Douglas County Commissioners yesterday mm -hmm. and uh, Administrator Jim Barker, who's mm -hmm. going to tell us more about a major property ah. sale that's going on over there. The news with Grant Nelson comes your way at 5 o'clock real quickly. Your weather forecast, clouds, rain, snow, spittles off and on about 1, 2 o'clock. The clouds will depart. The sun will come out. 
Uh, we'll see highs in the lower 40s. Uh, right now, the mountain passes are not particularly pleasant, especially Snoqualmie Pass. There is a chain requirement on I-90. Unless you have an all-wheel drive, they're going to get quite a bit of snow today. Alan Walker, the new executive director of the Schlan Douglas Community Action Council, will be on the show tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.